Yo, what's good with you on today's video? I got the how to make an enemy NPC, or I should say the updated version of how to make an enemy NPC slash AI video and stuff. If you guys recall, I made the original video, uh, maybe, I don't know, was it last summer or was it like, I don't know. I honestly don't know if it was like 2023 summer or if it was like a little later, but I just know it's been, it's been a minute. It's been definitely over half a year. I know that much, but yeah. I'm hitting you guys with updated version. If you saw so my solo leveling video, the part two, you'll notice the code is literally the same. So if you watch solo leveling part two, you can just take that code and just use it. And I'll just explain how it works in more detail. <clears throat> but anyway, let's go ahead and get straight into it. Okay. First thing first, of course, we need an NPC, right? So let's click avatar. I mean, you guys can get you guys can get um your NPC either, you know, either you made it or you get it from the toolbox. It doesn't matter. But just get your NPC right insert a black avatar if you're doing it this way and then i'm just going to name it enemy right <clears throat> so all we got to do um put it inside a server storage just to double check and stuff now in most cases this is a rare thing doesn't really happen as much anymore but just in case just double check and make sure that none of the parts of the of your model are anchored because because the whole point is we want the you know the npc to be able to walk so then they can't walk if parts are anchored right so just make sure nope none of the parts are anchored then once you're done, we can simply insert a server script into server script service. We only need one script. I'm going to rename this script to enemy script. <clears throat> As you can see, I have a walk animation. So you can just click the plus icon, insert an animation into the enemy script. You want to rename it to walk animation, throw your animation ID in there. You guys have to use your own animation ID. This is optional though. You guys don't have to include this. I just decided to throw in an animation instead of having like, you know, the, the NPC, like just moving across like literally just you know gliding across the floor because literally this is what it this is what it would have looked like they would have just been like gliding across the floor as they like slowly approach me so i instead wanted to throw in a walk animation right so this is complete completely optional but highly recommended so you would just throw your walk animation in there um yeah oh actually now that i really i need an r6 model because the walk animation is r6 not r15 so let me switch that model definitely make sure you guys also have the right you know, um, if you know if the animation is R6, make sure using an R6 rig and vice versa with R15. Okay, <clears throat> so let me open up the enemy script. I'm going to delete print hello world as always. Then let me just double check. Okay, good. So let me go ahead and create some variables. <clears throat> first and first, let's create a variable for the enemy NPC. Let's say local enemy NPC is equal to game that server storage that enemy. Or sorry, oh I forgot to rename it. So I'm just renaming this to enemy let me say that enemy clone i just want to clarify something too okay the code i'm showing you guys right here's how you make an enemy like you clone it from server storage drop it in workspace it chases whatever the, it chases the closest player and then it damages them over time right but like you you can't like literally just take this code and paste it you know what i'm saying and like use it in an actual game you have to you know modify it somewhat because this code is just designed to where it's like it just drops in an enemy npc <clears throat> And stuff and then it just chases chases the nearby players and stuff like that it doesn't have any like way to like you know check if it's died and stuff you guys can add that stuff but i just haven't added this stuff i'm just letting y'all know but anyway then let's go ahead and throw a wait for child save we're gonna say enemy npc wait for child humanoid this is for the animation because of course you can't play an animation without the humanoid so let's say local at short for animation track is equal to enemy npc dot humanoid load animation right and then Wait, this is um the not the bug. What was it called? Deprecated. Hmm. I might have to look into how you're supposed to load. I'm confused because I did not know you could. If this is deprecated anyway, I'll have to look into that after the video. But anyway, <clears throat> so we can see load animation. Load animation. Then I'm gonna say script regular bracket quotation marks walk animation, or you can say script dot walk animation. That probably would honestly been easier. But anyway, you're gonna say at play. All right, we're gonna play the animation track. Then I'm going to create a hitbox because of course you know we need a hitbox to detect if the player is close enough for, or not to be damaged. So let's say local hitbox is equal to instance that new. You could also just put the hitbox onto the enemy. Like if you just wanted to create the box, you could also do that. But I would recommend doing it the way I'm doing it. And then if you want to change how the hitbox looks, you know, sizing and whatnot, then you could just, you know, do that then. But anyway, let's say local hitbox is equal to, you know, part, comma, parent this to the enemy NPC's humanoid root part. Then I'm going to say hitbox.name <clears throat> is equal to hitbox. Then I'm going to say hitbox dot, um, anchored is equal to false. Hitbox.camglide is, of course, equal to false. 
hitbox dot massless is equal to true then hitbox dot transparency is equal to one hitbox dot size is equal to vector three dot new and then I'm going to say five comma six or sorry five comma six comma five uh, two point five and stuff so feel free to adjust these numbers as needed however you want then I'm going to say hitbox dot color this is for testing is equal to color three dot new stuff then I'm going to set the color to one which I think is one comma zero comma zero yeah right and then I'm say hitbox <clears throat> and I'm say hitbox or sorry yeah I'm say hitbox pivot two all right then I'm gonna pivot over to the enemy NPCs uh C frame so human or root part C frame and then I'm gonna weld it I'm gonna say local weld constraint is equal to instance that new in quotation marks put weld constraint parent this to the hitbox you're going to say weld constraint that part zero is of course equal to the hitbox then weld constraint that part one is equal to enemy npc dot humanoid root part right and then we're going to create a variable for the closest player we're going to say local closest or closest player is equal to and then by default you can just hit the nil that's stuff right so it's nothing then we're going to set up the while loop. this while loop is going to continuously run until you know just find the player so i'm going to say while true do enter right let me scroll down <clears throat> we'll set up our minimum distance we're going to say local minimum minimum distance now you guys can either set this number to you know to an actual value and you can set it to a value that you know whatever value a specified value or you can do a kind of thing where i'm just going to say map that here so it just generates a random number I'm saying map that huge. Then I'm gonna use a for loop. I'm gonna say for i comma v and perish. Just so y'all know, this only works with players. Like, don't have other NPCs in the game and expect this NPC to chase around the NPC. Like, it would it would only chase around actual players. So I'm gonna say game dot players get children enter. I'm gonna set up a variable for the character. I'm gonna say local character is equal to v dot character. Right. Then I'm going to say if character so pretty much it finds a character. Then I'm gonna say I'm going to create a variable for the distance. I'm going to say local distance is equal to in parentheses. You want to say enemy npc dot humanoid root part dot position minus then just the vice versa character dot humanoid root part dot position. Go on the outside of those parentheses, and then you're going to say dot magnitude, right? Magnitude. Then you're going to say if distance is less than minimum distance, or if you want to put a specified value, you could also put that, right? Because that means you're in range. Then enter. You're going to say minimum distance is equal to distance right <clears throat> then i'm going to say closest player is equal to v so we're going to update it to the player's instance right and then i'm going to say enemy npc dot and i said move to colon move to closest player dot character humanoid dot humanoid root part dot position it needs to be a vector three coordinate right then I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna use rate casting. So we've made it so that it'll you know pick up where the closest character, the locus player is, you know, to the to the enemy NPC, and then it'll you know chase after them, chase after them. So now all we need to do is you know add the combat so that it'll damage them. So I'm gonna use rate casting, of course. So I'm gonna say for setup start position, so local start position is equal to enemy NPC dot humanoid root part dot hit box dot position right let's save ourselves some time let's copy and paste this control c control v and of course this will be our direction and then for this you're going to say hitbox dot c frame dot look vector boom and lastly let's set up the raycast param so let's say um let me fix this local let's say local raycast params is equal to raycast params dot new parentheses close parentheses then then we'll go to the next line. I'm gonna say recast params dot filter type is equal to enum dot recast filter type dot exclude. And lastly, recast params dot filter descendants instances is equal to special brackets. You're going to say enemy NPC get children. Now, for people who watch my other videos, make sure you're, you're referencing the right one because I know we're used to you know referring to the character rather than the enemy. And so just make sure you're referencing the correct instance, right? Then I'm going to officially cast the ray. I'm going to say local ray is equal to workspace ray cast. For the origin, that'll of course be the start position, comma, throw our direction ra um, variable in there, right? And then lastly, throw our ray cast params variable. And then we can go ahead and get our checks underway. I'm going to say if ray, so one, the ray is casted, and ray.instance, which means it did intersect, make contact with um, 
any instance that wasn't a children of you know the enemy of see oh sorry i actually changed this not get children get descendants that's what it's supposed to be sorry. get descendants but anyway i mean they both would work but get descendants is better because i'm pretty sure it goes into all the children as well but anyway um i'm gonna say and ray dot instance dot parent dot name is of course equal to closest player dot name just want we just want it to be like this say if so the way i made it so that if the npc is chasing a player it can only damage that player like it's only gonna you know it's gonna go after like it's only gonna damage whoever like it's not gonna be chasing one player and then because it passes another one it's gonna you know damage them while walking the opposite way now if you want to change it to where like any player who's generally like they become within right they're in, they're within range of the hitbox so if they can be damaged then you could leave this part out you could just you know delete this part right and, and as well but yeah and then that's it i'm gonna say enter and then we're gonna create a variable for the enemy character local enemy character is equal to ray dot instance dot parent and then simply just say enemy character dot humanoid dot health is less than equal to i'm gonna say five up to you guys whatever you want and for the last thing of course we need a task that wait or a wait because obviously it's a while loop so we don't want it to you know, crash the server so you're just going to go after the second to last end put a space Pass that wait. You can play around with this wait time. I found 0 0.3 seconds to be nice, but you guys can adjust this as needed and stuff, right? But yeah, let's go ahead and get straight into it and test to make sure everything works. As always, as always, if you guys want access to any one of my scripts or models, you guys can become either a channel member or a Discord subscriber. Link to either one of those options can be found in the description. Let's go ahead and test this with what's going on. Can I load the animation provider service? Um, I think that's a Roblox. I honestly think that's a Roblox glitch. No, no. Oh no, never mind. Hmm. Hmm. I'm trying to remember what did I, I did something. I'm trying to remember. I put an animator in here. Um, I think I also put like an animation controller. I don't know if that really changed anything. I'm trying to remember. I don't know why it's doing that for whatever reason. Yeah, because it's just not working aside from that. Hmm. That's. It's weird. Let me see. Okay, so we clone the enemy NPC, and I just I just realized I forgot probably one of the most important things. I did not parent the enemy NPC to the workspace. They okay. So after you're gonna say enemy NPC, that parent is equal to workspace. Obviously, you can't load it because the enemy NPC isn't even in the workspace yet. Of course. Okay, so as soon as I play, boom. So it's there. You guys see it. It is chasing me. Wait, why is it like that? Is not what is supposed to be happening because it, it's it, it's supposed to chase me. Like it's instead teleporting to me. Look, I did the wrong thing. So when I did enemy NPC, let me see enemy NPC. I mean, I see the okay. I see the problem. I did enemy. Okay, here I looked something out. This is why I test. You want to do enemy NPC dot humanoid. Humanoid is where they actually walk towards it move to is just i knew it yeah move to is when you're just setting the position so in other words it was just teleporting to me this is it actually like tracking yeah this is it actually like following me you guys see now it's actually the walking animation is playing it's following me if i go to the right it goes to the right if i go to the left it's going to the left if i just go in a straight line backwards it'll just go yeah there we go now it's actually following me then if i let it get close to me boom i start getting damage and stuff but obviously you know if i get away it'll stop but then if i let it get to me boom you can also have some sound effects maybe have some background music um damage sound effects you know up to you guys whatnot but yeah hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did definitely leave like subscribe if you're new and stuff um if you guys want i don't know some more enemy <clears throat> npc scripting and whatnot or just general npc scripting leave a comment let me know you know what i'm saying thank you guys for all the love and support i'm showing all my videos i really do appreciate it we are on our way to 8,000 subscribers and stuff you guys have been showing so much love i really do appreciate it and i hope you guys are enjoying the solo the solo leveling series i'll definitely keep that up but yeah i'll see you guys in the next video thank you for watching